Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Welcome to our today's video. In this video, we'll talk about some pupillary pathology. Pupil is a very important thing in our clinical examination because from the clinical examination of the pupil, we may find different informations about the different diagnosis and diseases. So let's talk about whom's AD pupil. Okay, so what is a pupil? Pupil is a shutter-like structure. It uh, it maintains the amount of the light which will enter into our light into our uh, retina or into our eye okay so when when a light is thrown into our eye it will enter into our eye and then it will in uh, it will cause excitation of the retina and from that an electrical impulse will go by the optic optic nerve okay so then the optic nerve gives of a branch at the level of the brain stem or you can say it mid brain okay i am writing it brain mid brain so at the level of the mid brain gives of a branch to a nucleus which is known as Pretectal nucleus and the pretectal nucleus it innervates another two nucleus. So what is the name of that nucleus? It's called Edinger Westphal nucleus. Okay. So Edinger Westphal nucleus is a parasympathetic nucleus. So the pretectum innervates both sided Edinger Westphal nucleus, the same side and the opposite side. Okay, so you have shown a light and that light causes the pretectum to be stimulated and from that stimulation the pretectum also stimulates both the edinger westphal nucleus and from the edinger westphal nucleus another fiber appears which is known as preganglionic parasympathetic fiber. Okay, so the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber synapses with a ganglion. Which ganglion? This ganglion is known as ciliary ganglion. Okay, so this is an important topic. Ciliary ganglion. We will discuss about today that ciliary ganglion damage may occur. Holmes, Eddy, pupil. Okay, so ciliary ganglion. From the ciliary ganglion, there appears another nerve. This is known as short ciliary nerve. Okay, so short ciliary nerve appears from there. And that short, short ciliary nerve binds with uh, or it. Uh, uh, gives branch to the neuromuscular junction of our sphincter pupillary muscle. So it maintains the tone of the sphincter pupillary muscle. So what is the function of the sphincter pupillary muscle? This is sphincter pupillary or the constrictor pupillary muscle causes constriction of the iris. Okay. So constriction of iris happens due to its action. So you think that if the uh, ciliary ganglion is damaged, then the constrictor pupillary muscle will not work as like that and the pupil will be dilated. Why the pupil will be dilated? Because there is an always a sympathetic and parasympathetic balance in our body. The sympathetic nerve and the parasympathetic nerve works in as like opposite direction. So in our eyes, this is this happens that the sympathetic fiber causes the eye or the iris to be dilated. And the parasympathetic fiber causes the iris to be constricted. Okay, so iris to be constricted, and there is an always a balance between constriction and dilatation. Okay, so again, when uh, we are in um, dark condition or when there is dim light, the pupil usually dilates, and when there is bright light or there is much light in the environment, so then the pupil constricts because the pupil wants to enter less amount of light inside our eyes. So, if parasympathetic fibers are destroyed, then the sympathetic fiber will get upper hand and they will cause the dilatation of the eye. So, this is the main mechanism of Holmes AD pupil. So, let's see what happens in Holmes AD pupil. The Holmes AD pupil is a condition which is unknown in nature and the most important is it is a benign condition. Okay. So, there is nothing to worry about the Holmes AD pupil. And the characteristics are the pu this condition is usually unilateral and the pupil is regular and mildly dilated why this condition is unilateral because the ciliary ganglion damage occur due to some viruses or bacterial infections and usually the virus or bacteria infects one sided ciliary ganglion but you see that if there is damage in the midbrain or if there is damage in the pretectal nucleus it may causes the uh, damage in both sides okay so pretectal nucleus or edinger westphal nucleus if there is damage in that level it may cause the both sided damage or bilateral damage but in this case e there is ciliary ganglion damage and ciliary ganglion damage may be unilateral and in 20% cases it may be bilateral also so unilateral in 80% cases and 20% cases it is bilateral also. 
Okay, so we have uh, already learned that how the pupil is mildly dilated and why this is unilateral and you will find that there is slow pupillary dilatation. So why there is slow pupillary dilatation occurs here? Because as the sympathetic fibers get upper hand, the sympathetic fiber causes the, dilat causes the dilatation of the eye. But the pupillary fibers, that is parasympathetic uh, pupillary fibers of the uh, sphincter pupillary uh, muscles constrict due to action of the parasympathetic fibers and this parasympathetic fiber actually they, uh, does not regress at all because the ciliary ganglion damage does not uh, regress all the nerves, does not damage all the nerves. So that's why in some cases or oh, in most of the cases the pupil is uh, mildly dilated and there is slow pupillary dilatation. It is it it remains in a tonic content on uh, tonic stage and that's why we also say that it's a tonic eddy pupil okay so home steady pupil is also known as tonic eddy pupil because the pupil is always there in a tonic muscle contraction but as the time passes by the pupil will slowly dilate it okay and there is another term that is light near dissociation and we will discuss it later what is light near dissociation so we have already learned that, that there is damage in the midbrain no oh no sorry there is not damage in the midbrain the light passes starts from the midbrain and then it goes to ciliary ganglion that short ciliary nerves to the sphincter pupil muscle and causes constriction of the pupil and the problem is in the ciliary ganglion okay so and there is another symptom named the holmes eddy syndrome because the eddy's pupil is usually Though the word is similar to Adam, Eddie and Adam, but it occurs in Eve. Okay, so the females are the mainly sufferer. And so when there is Eddie's people in young female and there is also hyporeflexia in all over the body, we call it Holmes Eddie syndrome. So Holmes Eddie syndrome comprises of the three things. Number one, Eddie's people. Number two, hyporeflexia. And number three, young female. Okay, so there is a mnemonic for those who cannot memorize all the things and the mnemonic describes all the topic in a summary okay so a b c d we'll first say a b c d a for eddy's pupil b for buke pupil that is mitriasis occurs in that case c for ciliary ganglion damage and d for denervation hypersensitivity so you may think what is denervation hypersensitivity okay as the parasympathetic fibers are damaged so there is no stimulation from the parasympathetic fibers and as a result the muscarinic receptors the muscarinic receptors will be upregulated muscarinic receptor muscarinic receptor upregulation okay so muscarinic receptor upregulation will cause more stimulation to a slash stimuli and this is called denervation hypersensitivity when you cut off a nerve supply to a, a, any area it causes the receptor to be upregulated increasing their number increasing their sensitivity and this causes what this causes a mild stimulation a bigger response okay so the denervation hypersensitivity occurs here and there are many more conditions where the denervation hypersensitivity can also occur okay so this denervation hypersensitivity causes the pilocarpine hyper response because the pilocarpine if we give pilocarpine at about 0.05 to 0.1 to 5 percent which is a very much less amount or less concentration this doesn't usually causes a response or this doesn't change the shape of the pupil but as there is pilocarpine hypersensitivity responsive due to denervation hypersensitivity so when we give pilocarpine it will causes the eyes to be more tonic and the more constricted okay so the eyes will be more constricted due to a very a very dilated form of pilocarpine and this is an important feature to investigate the case or to diagnose the case we will give 0.1 to 5 percent pilocarpine and there will be a dramatic result and this dramatic result indicate there is denervation hypersensitivity and pilocarpine hyper response okay so another thing is that another p so we have already said that a b c d p p v a b c d p p v so a b c d a eddy's pupil b big a, a also eddy's pupil b big pupil or mitosis c for ciliary ganglion damage d for denervation hypersensitivity p for pilocarpine hyper responsiveness and another p for post ganglionic apparent fiber so what is post ganglionic apparent fiber so suppose this is your ciliary ganglion and this is your eye okay so in this is your eye and in your eyes there is uh, 
here is the lens and here are the and alongside the lens there is a sphincter pupillary muscle and also there is ciliary body okay so there this is ciliary body and from that the fiber is holding the lens okay so this ciliary body uh, with there is the uh, inner accommodation reflex both the ciliary muscles and the sphincter pupillary muscle both acts cause from the ciliary ganglion there one fiber goes to the ciliary uh, body and another fiber goes to the sphincter pupillary muscle and when there is ciliary ganglion damage or damage to the fibers of the post ciliary ganglion there after the damage there will be regeneration of the nerves and this regeneration of the nerves causes post ganglionic aberrant fibers what means that aberrant fiber that the fibers that uh, that was supposed to uh, give stimulation to the muscles of the eyelid or the sphincter pupillae they will innervate the ciliary muscles okay so the ciliary body or the ciliary muscles will be innervated more and that finger is very approximate to the eye and there's that will cause the accommodation reflex and the accommodation reflex is there that your eyes will convert and your pupils will be constricted and in that case when the there is apparent post ganglionic fibers are there that will causes much more constriction of the eye because the ciliary fibers which are will be supplied by the nerve is now supplying the sphincter muscles okay so there is a contradictory here that the accommodation reflex causes more constriction of your eyes okay so there is post ganglionic apparent fiber and another thing is that the vermiform movement of the iris because why the vermiform movement of the iris you, if you see the iris and in that iris there is some areas are paralyzed and some are not so is some areas are paralyzed and some are not and that causes abnormal movement of the iris or irregular movement of the iris and this is known as vermiform movement of the iris so we have already discussed all that thing a b c d and p p v so let's summarize about the topic so from that we have find that this is a case of tonic pupil why the pupil is tonic because there is damage of the parasympathetic fibers okay there is damage in the parasympathetic fibers and so it is a condition which is known as home steady pupil okay and it is also constricted and after constriction there is denervation hypersensitivity and denervation hypersensitivity co causes hyper response of pyrocarpine okay so that's all for today hope you enjoyed the video if you have any comment regarding our contents or how can we improve our content please let me know in our comment section thank you assalamu alaikum